Welcome to another Chachmat, another Shark Fest. Smile, you son of a bitch! <laughs> yes, sir! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the great white shark. Nature's perfect killing machine. Until me and my daddy whipped his ass! Coming up in this episode of Chachmat, Shark Fest. That good us. And Johnny's just disappeared. And Johnny's just disappeared. You hear about the shark, aren't you? I can believe your friend may have been eaten by a shark. It's the description of that shark that I am having a hard time with. Maybe all we gotta do is stay dry and it'll leave us alone. Hands loose. The word of the day. When you say translucent, you mean like a jellyfish? Meaning we could see right through it. I know what the damn word means. Besides us uh, sitting and waiting for John, there's probably going to be more interesting in this this podcast. So, you know. Fight me, you bitch. All we need is the will to live, and that thing is coming after us. That's the point. In order to kill it, you gotta be willing to die. Son of a bitch. Once again, we're back, and I am. Uh, uh, I'm outside, as you can tell, <laughs> in the street. Um, not really, uh, obviously. Um, but this is another shark fest. And today we're going to be talking about ghost shark. Now, ghost shark, for those who haven't heard of it, is a sci-fi original. And it's from the producers and director of Swamp Shark, that episode of our podcast that went down so well. Um, but with me on this um, adventure in the seas um, is my fellow co-host, Neil Stringer. Say hello, Neil. Hello there. And our very special guest, Ian Lother. Hello, Ian. Hello, guys. Good to be back. And... You will notice that um, Sharky Shark is not with us because he's a bit deflated today. Um, but I will be back for future episodes. You need to know what Ghost Shark is all about. Where do we begin with this story? I mean, is it worth even telling you what the plot is? <laughs> because the, the one thing about it is the plot doesn't really matter. Uh, it's got um, magic. It's got paranormal. Um, you know, it's got interesting visual effects. I mean, that's all you really need to know. I mean, if you want to talk about story, and this is only the this is only the first ten minutes, a great white shark eats a potential catch of a fisherman, and the man and his daughter violently retaliate by sadistically torturing and killing the shark. Now, bear with me on this. The shark's corpse then sinks to the bottom of an underwater cave. This is important. Um, it's subsequently resurrected as a ghost shark due to the cave's mysterious paranormal. Qualities. That's right. All that's done by the cave, right? Just remember that. Not a person, a cave. Uh, I know it's not an episode of Baywatch Night season two, although we we did say that it could be. Um, but anyway, the daughters of the captain of the boat then become involved in the movie, and the rest of it is, <laughs> you know, it's entertaining to say the least. But um, don't just take that from me. Let's see what others thought. I mean, Ian, starting with you, what mood has the the film left you in? I'm 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 in quite a happy sort of fun mood. You know, look, this film's not going to win any awards, or you know, it's not great quality. But I would say if you stuck for something to do some night and you've got a few friends over for a wash party, get some popcorn, have a few drinks, and have a laugh. You know, this film works best when you've got mates around and you, you're sort of doing a running commentary as you're watching it, you know, of all the ridiculous stuff that happens. So, yeah. And then, and then what happy. about yourself? What what's, what what mood would you say the film has left you in? I, I came over, um, 
we smell my face um because you know it, the the concept of a shark that's there as a ghost i can come out of any form of water is so ludicrous you just have to go with it so if you know that there and you just let your hair down and don't think too much about it you can have a good laugh at some of the awful acting some of the really cheesy effects and the really corny deaths. And speaking of acting, um, you know, starting with you, Neil, I mean, um, who do you think was the the best and the worst? I would say, you know, before you answer that, that compared to Swamp Shark, the acting was fairly even in this. You know, there, yeah. there wasn't that one person necessarily that stood out to me. What do you think? Well, the one actor who I was familiar with was Richard Mall, who played the character Finch. Now, he's appeared in a lot of shows right in the 80s and 90s. But for me, I probably know him best as the voice of Two-Face in the Batman animated series. So having him, although he's probably not as well known as some of the other A-list actors you would have you know, on Batman, I do think the fact that he is in the cast brings it up a level. Yeah, because the character he played... Finch was a lighthouse keeper and obviously he was very relevant to, you know, because um, the town have known for centuries of this sort of curse of the cave. So um, the fact that he's a lighthouse keeper, he was well aware of that. And, it, you know, according to the plot, um, you know, it, it, it unveils details about, you know, his wife's death and how the cave is involved in that as well. So his character was pivotal. And I do think I agree with you. You know, he's got a very distinctive voice, hasn't he? So it, it, he's um, he was very good at playing that kind of uh, slightly tortured man. He always had an alcohol problem as well, you know. Well, there's a bit of a cliche in, those, in that type of character, but let's face it, it's, it's probably playing on the cliches at the same time. <laughs> now, the mayor was played by Lucky Johnson. And uh, now he was, he was, he was good acting as well. It, it was a former basketball star. Um, and so he is in this as the mayor and his son is one of the, the sort of younger teenage characters in it. Um, so. Um, well, sorry, now as well known as OJ Simpson, you know, he's a footballer. But well, obviously if he was a bigger actor, he'd be doing bigger films than this one, but. <laughs> yeah. Oh Yeah. And um, I, I, there's a lot of TV actors in this. And I, when I was looking up, you know, a lot of them had been in uh, NCIS uh, New Orleans. Um, and so the acting pedigree here is a bit more than it was in uh, Swamp Shark. But, and, but these characters who played big parts in NCIS or were they just like the matter of background act actors? Do the ones they say... No. They, they weren't background actors, no, but they were, say, like guest roles and things like that. You know, like they weren't, they weren't, the, yeah, they weren't, no, no, they weren't the main cast members. Some of them had more, you know, uh, it better was than roles. others. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the point being that the, the people in the previous movie didn't really have that much experience, you know, so it, it shows in the end result. Now, I, I must admit, I don't really know. Um, the only other person I sort of half recognized was uh, the um, sheriff. Yeah, his name wasn't listed there, but he, he's been in loads of things as well. I'm just going to get it on. I have it up on uh, my phone, the, the movie. A lot of these actors in this film didn't actually even have Wikipedia pages. So not even, um, no one's actually done a, a Wikipedia page for some of these actors. So, yeah, it's hard that. to find sort of information on them. Um, yeah. Which maybe tells you a lot there, you know. <laughs> they're, they're not good enough. To, for, and Johnny's just disappeared. And Johnny's just disappeared. Ha! Huh. This is going well. Yep. I'm, I'm, just, gonna continue, I'm just going to continue recording because yeah, well, start well, to stop it. I mean, it'd, it'd be different files and... And then we have to we seek the audio and all that there. Yeah, so yeah. Besides us uh, sitting and waiting for John, it's probably going to be more interesting in this this podcast. So you know. Yeah. 
I mean, it's such a ludicrous idea, the concept of this film. You have to um go with it. It is, but, you know, as, you know, I, in some ways, though, what, what I kind of like about it is because you're dealing with a ghost shark, you know, at least you don't have to worry about your shark looking really realistic. Yeah. In the effects department, you know, like, sure, yes, you could have, you could make it look better at, than what we got, but at least, you know, at least it gives you uh, more options, I guess. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, obviously, you know, where, where I, I think it looks even cheaper is probably the deaths, you know. Yeah. Though I have to say, the ones, the, the people who, though, though I have to say, the ones who got killed, you know, because you know, they ignored them when they're running around in the with the water from the half fire hydrant and mm. her legs are just, and her legs are still um kicking about after their top you know, one of my eaten. one of my favorite deaths is the one where the guy drinks the, the water from the watercolor and then gets eaten from the inside out almost yeah i don't but know what, what, was... what i sort of thing i'm sort of thinking is you know the human body's made up a a lot of water so it'd be 70 percent water i think yeah so you know why doesn't the shark just, you know, yeah. explode out of everybody to kill them? You know, does it can can that come out of your own sweat? Does it not come out of your own urine? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hi there, thanks for stopping by. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel because we're on a mission to get 1,000 subscribers. Helping us to do so will unlock features on the YouTube channel, including monetization. Doing so will support the channel and help us create more content, better content, and be able to do more. So enjoy the rest of the episode. And don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Uh, we did get a toilet death, so you know. Yeah. Which I thought was hilarious. Uh, and see, and I'm going back to the bit, the bit, the guy getting killed from the shark eating him from inside out. Is it just me, or do you think um, the sheriff Amber's reaction was a bit numb plus given? Well, it was, but at the same, well, yeah, it probably was. Yeah. I mean, I think I'd be um... going a bit more. In... Here, is, yes, is Johnny said anything on the messenger? Just like half human phone. Yeah, he says, "Matter than die, give me a moment. Can you do me a favor and stop recording?" Oh, stop recording. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh... This is going again. There you go. We've resumed recording. So. There haven't been a shark attack in small part in over twenty years. Are you sure? Seriously? What the hell? God forgive me. Frank, Arlene, try and hold off Armageddon until I get back. I was actually talking about the sheriff. Yeah. And I was in the middle of googling him, and then everything went black. That's safe. But, yeah. Um. So I'll just take it from, you know, from me talking about him. Mm. Okay, so, yeah, the sheriff, he's got one of those faces. Um, I said he kind of looks sort of Abraham Lincoln, um, but his name is Thomas Francis Murphy. Now, he's not a big, big name, but he's been in a few things. Um, and uh, I don't know, I'll put a picture up, you know, to show the audience um, what he looks like and everything. But this is a, that's kind of like a, him in something else so he's certainly got a, a look about him hasn't he yeah uh, but he was he was very good as the sheriff wasn't he he was he's uh you know he's learned you know the first thing he hears is his character hears there's an invisible shark you know which is funny the kids telling them there's an 
visible shark out there, you know. So it's, you know, you sort of think, what are they smoking, you know? And then they get into this whole conversation about uh, transparent, is it? Sharks and what the word means. Translucent, yeah. Translucent, sorry, yes. Yeah. And what that word means. And the... So, yes, it's a funny sort of first scene for him, you know. And he doesn't overplay it, you know. He's not corny, he's not, you know, pantomiming, you know, he's sort of... No, he plays it pretty straight. Yeah. And then, obviously, we've got, you know, the, the mayor's daughter, or the mayor's, the mayor's son, and the, the captain of the boat who gets killed at the start, his daughter's. Um, they yeah, have one the, pool parties and things, aren't they? And... Yeah, they, you know, they've had this tragedy and they've, uh, they work out, oh, I forgot I'm throwing a party this weekend and we've invited pretty much half the, half the country, you know, in terms of teenagers and stuff. So, uh, so They're they decide, tricks. you know, we could, we could cancel, we could cancel this or we could turn it into a memorial for the fallen sort of thing, you know? But now it's just a pool party, you know, for kids to have beers and play stupid games in the pool and what have you. Kind of hence the um the the fat one, the, well, you know, the really big one. Um, he um obviously he was the first one to go because he um did treat like a party and was happy to ignore the death of their friend and dig it out of the water fast. Yeah, well, enough. this was the this was the first time we've seen the ghost shark. Out of the ocean, yeah, and appears uh in the pool. Should we say? Now I'm doing a gainer in your house. So the par the paranormal properties of the shark allow it to apparently appear in any form of water. Um, so whether it be a sprinkler system, um, there was a a, a man that uh, went to the water cooler to get a drink and you know exploded everywhere because the shark ate him from within. If, it, if he if the shark can eat people from within, I was saying to Neil earlier about. Ah uh, well, you know the the human body is what seventy percent water. Seventy eighty percent or something. Or, uh, something like that. Yeah. So you know, the shark exactly. can should be a the part of everybody the, from inside. The part is the microwave from the Apple Extrusion. Ugly bags of mostly water. We are. <laughs> well, the, the the it resulted in um, you know, a, a very funny visual where the shark's head sort of the the guy's body was like splitting in half. You know, it was like almost like skin, you know, mm -hmm. and the shark's and head. The shark's head just, yep. So he, he was wearing him like a suit kind of thing. It was just, and they just looked at each other. Oh, you know. Yeah. Kind of like, I, I, I mean, the thing it. is, how do you, as an actor, what, what way do you react to that? I thought they, they played it down. I thought they played it down very well. Oh. It, it is. like uh, It's more like we hear like a bad joke or something rather than, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, because you, you could go with something going, oh. What? But what what amazes like, me, you know, Bucky Johnson, the mayor, sees this with his own two eyes, and then when he realizes his son is a victim of this shark, this ghost shark decides, you know what, I'm going to hunt this thing down using bullets. Like, what part of ghost does he not understand? The problem is, how can you kill something that's already dead? Exactly. Which which brings us to another point of the movie or, or plot point um uh you know you try to think what do these movies draw on and i was thinking it's kind of like charmed you know i mean there obviously there are other shows and movies with these things in them but you know the book of shadows the grimoire you know it's kind of like you can only kill it with, obviously the ghostbusters you know they don't exist in this universe so there's no there proton accelerators section, there is like a 10 minute point in this movie where you know the the teens who are trying to stop the shark go to a museum and you get like the 10 minutes of sort of dialogue with the guy at the museum 
telling them like the history of the town, the uh, curator, the cave, and the, uh, you know, and of course there's a book, you know, where they can well, have magical spells that they can try and get rid of the shark with. Yeah. I'm really sorry about your wife. But she's been dead for a long time. It wasn't your fault. She drowned. I tell her! Shit! Yeah. That's the one that's the, the grimoire. You know, it's like using magic with the paranormal. It's kind of... Uh, um, one of the things that's interesting about it is it's the idea that this cave is cursed so that whoever you know dies within it you know it becomes that kind of restless soul and mm. um uh, it's one of those things it's the curse of the town as we said before um but everyone in the town knows about it but they try to keep it down you know f- for Jurism. the election campaign for the mayor and stuff <laughs> they don't want people to feel that it's it's going to overtake them but obviously the yeah. older members of the community know about it and the yeah. mayor is willing and the mayor is willing to um have his son committed just so he looks good for the uh, press. Yeah, that's an attempt at kind of satire um, as well there, you know, for people who are more concerned about their image than their mm. own family. So, uh, yeah, um, it's definitely a step up writing-wise as well. You know, there's certainly more st- substance, if you want to call it that, um, within it than the Swamp Shark because the Swamp Shark won. Um, the sheriff was much more uh, cold uh, mm-hmm. more villainy in that you know at least these people they weren't villains as such they were just okay. um thinking of things for the wrong reasons you know making decisions for the wrong one of the one of, one of the things that surprised me was the finch character because yes. he was you know he was played as he's the old man sort of that you know the town knows about you know they think he's maybe committed a murder and you know he's very much a loner this that and the other and then we find out that well, he actually is a murderer. Yeah, yeah. There's no bones about it. Yeah, I did yeah. that. I I did that thing. Yeah, usually yeah, she... that doesn't happen. Usually mm. he, he gets vindicated, you know, at the end. Whereas in this movie, it's no, I actually did it. I'm, I'm sorry, I did it. I I just lost my temper, killed my wife, and now she's back as a a force ghost, I guess. But she doesn't hate me. But she doesn't she hate help, me. She's not she helps in any way. She helps him, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, because usually you always get that um kind of who is misunderstood, and then yeah, you realize, he's a nice guy, like that guy in Home Alone. You know? Yeah, yeah, but that's like an excellent example of that. You know, the misunderstood. Whereas this guy, sort of, yes, he is what they thought he is, remorseful as he may be, you know. Well, I should point out, you know, the amount of water that's in this car wash, shower, water cooler, puddles, the sea, even rain just falling on the ground. The tagline for the movie is don't get wet. wet. And I think I think that because any part of your body that's wet, the shark can appear in. That's mm. that's the funny and also um the plumber. It's 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 funny, but it's also horrific. It is, if you think about it, now, you know, we did we did find out with the water cooler scene, you know, he takes a drink of water and the wee plastic cup's got water in it. He drinks that and as soon as he does, the shark eats him with within. So, you know, it's yeah. all very well saying don't get wet, but you need water. So also, yeah, don't, don't get contaminated water in your system. Yeah. Also, but anyone can be contaminated. That's a problem in this film. But did, did, he, did he, any of you guys, folks, you mentioned the car wash, did any of you guys laugh at the um, at the teenage boy stealing the card and putting dirt on just so you can watch the girls? So they can, uh, so they can watch the, the teenagers in their bikinis washing his car. And, and the way he was doing it, there was, um, was, was acne and braces, you know, <laughs> like the really stereotypical nerdy teen. <laughs>
So in, okay. in terms of, you know, acting, I would say that he gets the best and the worst acting. It's bad, but it's also funny as hell to funny watch. Hell. It is. You know, and the girls don't seem to mind. No, they were they were egging him on until there they was were. a sudden splatter of blood Shark on the windscreen. Yep. Well, when you go to watch cars like that, there, you know, you, you, what are you asking for? It? And so, in terms of the story, you know, this plot of the cave and the man's wife that he actually did murder. I mean, when we look at these movies, of course, the story is not really always important. But was it engaging? What do you think? I don't know if I would go as far and say it was. In- Gauging, but at least there was a sort of you know these people you know they know what they're on a mission to kill this shark they know what they may have to do you know they go on a mission to find out information then they go on the mission to kill the shark so at least there's a rhyme and reason why things are happening as far fast as it all may be you know so there's a story there's that. a story logic there is, is a saying? story logic yeah. there there's an attempt to yeah Give, give some basis in, a, yeah. in a narrative. Whereas we've watched a lot of these shark movies and, you know, the purpose of the movie is really just to see people getting eaten by sharks. And don't get yes. me wrong, this is still a big part of this movie. You know, you know, one of the fun things for me about shark movies is seeing the extent of ways that sharks can kill people. And uh, in this movie, they've got a few too. I mean, you remember the kids sort of uh, water slide? Where you oh, slide yes, yes. into the, and it's actually it's actually shaped as a shark's mouth, and he slides along it, and then the shark pops out and eats him. Yes, that you was know. very inventive. You know, I like inventive touches like that, as you say. Yeah. You know, it does. Uh, I'm probably the, not. Yeah. I'm probably not. If we can get a still of that, it would be a brilliant because I'm probably not doing that justice. I'm trying to help you. All right, there's a shark. It. I know it sounds crazy, all right? You gotta go! I was on with y'all smoking. <laughs> yes. I wonder if I did it well. Was, you know the kids who got killed, the ones who ignored them and they're playing in the water of the fire hydrant? That right. when their top house got it, 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 their bottom house are still wiggling their legs yeah. for their, their last little bit before they die. It's funny, you know, that's where some of the bad sort of CGI comes in, isn't it? And this is, this is actually the next point I was going to say. When we talk about special effects and production values, cheap or effective, or, you know, what do you think? In my opinion, it wasn't so horrible. Um, I think I think it was... It looked cheap, but that kind of worked for the movie. What do you yeah, think? I mean, I think for the for the you know, at least with this, your shark is an effect. You know, you don't have to worry it for the most part of it being super accurate looking and looking real. You know, so and, with, and with that in mind, with that in mind, I just want to say to the the listeners and the viewers, um, the shark was a replica of Bruce the one that they used in the film Jaws. So I think the way it was done was it was kind of acting as a puppet and then they added the effects to the shark then mm. to make it this see-through sort of translucent thing. Yeah. But I, I believe it was a practical thing, you know, that they were doing it with. So I guess that kind of adds to the slight okay. cheesiness right. of it, you know. Yeah. So I think from from that point of view, that, that worked in their favour were for me it it's sort of let down in the effects department is all the all the deaths where you see yeah. you know like like uh the lower halves of people's bodies still moving and stuff that looks very sort of dodgy should we say as as they say janky effects yes uh, but um I, it is an interesting thing because when you know when you see some of them getting eaten by the shark sometimes you see them you know and then suddenly there's blood or sometimes it's almost like a visual wipe you know as the shark moves across the person disappears i mean do you really want great effects in a movie like this or this is the cheap effects part of it the fun you know this this is it and the thing is as we've discovered in some of the other films that we've watched when when they with this particular movie they took the shark and the sort of 
dodgy shark effect. And they made that the thing of the movie. Whereas in other movies, like in, in Swamp Shark, for example, the main thing about it was it was about smuggling and the mm. sheriff didn't believe that the shark existed. And he, he let it do its thing. Whereas I think what works in this is that people don't believe that the shark is happening until it comes towards them and they see it with their own eyes. And they're like, I mean, even the guy, even the one of the teenage um, guys in it, you know, who's, I forget his name. He's like one of the love interests and he's trying to convince the kids in the street and when he when he goes to say, "Oh, the shark! It's a shark, but it can appear anywhere," he stops himself because the very he knows. description of it. It's like this sounds they're ludicrous. Never, they're never, they're never going to believe me, you know. So within the story itself, the, there's a certain logic and you know um, truth mm-hmm. to the reality of it. Whereas in the, I think what where Swamp Shark fell down was, you had that very annoying guy who did said, "Oh, there's no sharks can't come into swamps," and they kind of left at that. They, they didn't have fun with the idea. So it just so happened people died and that was it. Whereas this, you've got a glowing shark. There's more fun, isn't there? It's a bit like Robo Shark, actually, in that in that way. You know, it's the same kind of um, silliness to it that sort of adds to it. Whereas in Swamp Shark, it was trying to be a serious, you know, movie. I also feel that when, you, when your film is called Go Shark, I don't think your intention is to be Shakespearean in the quality of the material. You know, it's not Macbeth. It's not even Jaws. But you have to make a decision with the with the way you're going to do that, you know, the production values and the special effects is, you know, are you going to do it that way? And I think, you know, in talking about the production values, um, we mentioned the budget before um, Swamp Shark's budget was 3.7 million. So you're talking almost 4 million. And this one was 1.8 million. But yet, I would argue that this one had a better cinematic feel to the way it was actually shot. It looked more professional almost. Um, and it had a smaller budget. It was nearly half the budget, you know. And as you said, it, it seemed to have more actors with a bit more experience. But yet it had that much smaller budget, you know, so. Yes. So I think what happens happen. is, as a filmmaker, you're moving forward and you make a couple of films and you bring in friends and because um, I believe he was an actor as well. It could be wrong with that, but I think he was. So you bring in people, um, they've seen you make a film or two and they go, yeah, I'll come in. And so you can, you can build trust and they, yeah. I think it shows in this one. It definitely, it's a much more experienced movie. It certainly feels that way. Yeah. And so the next question I have for you is how did you feel during the movie? And then after watching the film, did you were you having fun watching it, or did you want it to end? Um, Neil, um, what did you think of it? Well, I was having fun with it. Uh, it didn't it didn't drag. It didn't feel like a chore. It just it was, and I find myself not engaged, but what? But I was interested in where it was going. You wanted to find a solution in the movie. Yeah. You want the characters to to get the solution. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know. Some of the, the the dark arts remind me of the episode of Baywatch Nights nice with Robin Sex. And maybe you should have had Robin Sex if he had the budget to be the creator. <laughs> yeah, definitely. What about yourself, Ian? Did you did you want it to end quickly or you thought this is all no, right? No, uh, overall, no. I mean, I think there was a bit near the sort of, not the end, but just before the end where it was starting to drag a wee bit. Uh, but what, for me, what keeps it going was the fact that working out, you know, where the shark is going to come from next. You know, yes, it was what kept it interesting. It was where the shark going to appear from now. Every time you seen like a splash of water or a wee drop of water, you were thinking, "Oh, oh!" Like when that guy was stupid enough to put a cigarette into the, uh, into the bin, and obviously it would start up to set up. It's going to start going on fire. Then you go, oh, "How's this going to?" And then you go, "Oh, fire sprinklers." And the other, the other thing as well is whenever they got to the part where they decided that they all agreed after a bit of back and forth. Um, that they would um, destroy the cave, and obviously there was that whole bit where they did the they did the ritual, and you think, oh, the shark's dead, but then he gets his uh, Finch gets his fingers nibbled. Oh. So um, I know, like that ha- because you, you thought it was going to the end there, yeah, and it didn't. You know, so that was that was a nice twist. He he had to he had to sacrifice, um, you know, the, the idea that his wife could be kept alive. That was really his motivation. You know, he had to, mm. she, she helped him decide that um, as a spirit. 
so when they did that though the, the scenes where they brought the carcass of the shark in there and they set up all the dynamite and then you had the bit where they you know realized actually it started to rain so the dynamite wasn't necessarily going to be uh you know the fuse wasn't going to be able to stay lit and all that Ooh. kind of thing so um that's when you got the scene where the my favorite line of the movie bite me you bitch the girl said and then of course the shark does but she does um you know come out of that with a scrape so um you know you get some they are fun scenes those you have to say you know that's the kind of scene you want in a film like that you know a little bit of confrontation some smart lines um cheesy you know that's that which is what sharknado is full of you know Mm. oh definitely i think that's what they were going for you know yeah exactly um i'm probably into the craze of anything with sharks well, this is it, you know, and, and I think they're, how inventive can you be, you know, with this? I, I do think it's a great concept, you know, it is. A, a shark can appear. You could be, you know, I could be drinking this um, Chachmat mug filled with water and out pops a shark. <clears throat> I mean, I wonder where a shark pop out of this. You know, do we have the budget to make a shark pop out of this? Oh, wow. Oh, look at that shark. Wow. Yeah. Or you drink it, and then all of a sudden you start it starts to eat you, eat you up from inside. <laughs> that's it. I mean, we don't have the budget to make me uh, be eaten by a shark inside, but we might have one to pop out there. I never know. We'll see. It could be like our Turkish delight <laughs> that appeared during the Christmas episode. <laughs> buy us a cup. Buy us a coffee so we can do a special edition of this episode. Absolutely. Yes, and speaking of buy me a coffee, you know, um, a nice segue into a plug. Um, yeah, um, the details on how you can, uh, you know, contribute to our own movie. It's not a shark movie, don't worry. Um, but the details, of course, will be within this episode as well. But, you know, on screen right now, hint, hint, help us, fund us. You know, we can make an equally shit movie. You know, who knows? But, you know, uh, you can get to laugh at that if you want. But give us the money and we'll do it. <laughs> If you enjoy silly, fun films, then why not support us in our short film project? We're making a comedy shot entirely on Super 8. You can support us through Buy Me A Coffee, but to get directly to our Buy Me A Coffee link and to find out more information about the actual film and to receive updates, go to super8portals.com and check the website for regular updates on our progress on the film. Now it's back to the podcast. And here's a quick look at our socials. On Instagram, we're at Chatschmat. On X or Twitter or whatever they're calling it this week, we are at Chatschmat. And you can email us show at chatschmat.com. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much. Um, And so, yeah, um, I just wanted to touch on, I think there was some information here. It's very difficult to actually pinpoint figures for these things. Yeah, I I couldn't find any viewing figures for this, which is a problem. But I believe just from, you know, various uh, people talking about it online, I do think it did well on on TV itself because... Being a TV movie, you're not as beholden to box office. You know, if you get enough of an audience for that, and and I think this is their plan, you know, they, they're they churning out these different shark movies for different people. You know, there is an audience for it there. So I think there's enough of a viewership to, I mean, that's the, the second out of multiple films that, that that production company got commissioned from sci-fi alone. So it, it obviously works for them. They're making money on it. Uh, so it, you know, despite whether you enjoyed it or not, um, there there is definitely an audience that these um, content providers are 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 providing to people, um, the sci-fi viewers in particular. But 
I mean, I think other companies are, have jumped on the bandwagon as well. So I just wish I, they would give us the viewing figures for that, but I, I couldn't see it. So I just wanted to make that point, you know, um, while we're on the subject of the, uh, you know, the, the audience and stuff. But um, to conclude, um, for me personally, um, I put it up there with one of the enjoyable films, not a chore to watch like some of the others. Um, entertaining, good acting. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you want to talk about flaws because um, a critical flaw of the movie for me just would be the fact that, um, you know, it would have been nice if there were better known people in it. Um, I think, the, you know, the Sharknado from what I understand later on, there's more and more cameos from people, but it's not a, it's not a, a criticism of the film. I think it's, it is what it is. It's never going to be uh, a premium movie. And, and I just want a silly B movie that can laugh at. And I think for me personally, it provided that. So what's your sort of conclusion then on the film, Ian? Again, that what I said at the start was if you've got mates around, you're having a watch party, having a drink, this is something that's very enjoyable. You know, yes, I could be critical, but I, in some ways I think that that would be unfair. I mean, I do think maybe the editing could be tighter in certain sequences. Um, yes, some people had commented on that as well. Right. You know, that it, it wasn't very tightly edited. Um, but sometimes that can add to the charm. Yeah. Sometimes it can make the pacing slower. But what what did you think of it? No, overall, I thought the pacing was fine. Uh, I, I thought, you know, especially during sort of scenes where you think the shark's going to eat somebody, the way they edit it sometimes feels quite uh, sort of jumping, almost, you know. Um, but other than that, no, I, 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 I uh, pretty much enjoyed it. And the acting, you know, like, again, none of these actors are going to win any awards for their performances. But, you know, with Swamp, uh, with Swamp Shark, it every time an actor was going to open their mouth, I was almost worried because going, oh, here we go, more terrible dialogue. But this, I mm -hmm. thought, was the acting was even across the board. And and on the dialogue, what it, did I mean? I, that's something I actually didn't mention. But I, what I was trying to say about the sheriff and that is more grounded acting, yeah. and you know, more natural. It wasn't really terrible. I mean, generally, everyone was relatively grounded within their roles. And yeah. there wasn't, you know, when you do some of these shark movies, you find there's a lot of one-liners. I think there's maybe only one or two that I can remember in this movie, yeah. you know. So mm -hmm. it it didn't it didn't go over the top of that sort of stuff. And they, um, what about yourself? Um, you know, what's your conclusion of the film then? Well, like Ian, you know, you could have a couple of friends around if you want to have like a bad movie night, you know, or or like a really low budget trash movie. And it'll fill the hole, should we say, of that craving. And compared to so like Swamp Shark or even Jurassic Shark, I did find this one more grounded, despite the more ludicrous concept of a ghost shark. And the characters were kind of likable. The, the sheriff wasn't a cartoon character. Well, not in the way that a sheriff would be in another type of movie this caliber, where they're kind of overacting it and being one dimensional. He was a bit more grounded, as Ian said. And the shark was a spectral, helped to um, get past the dodginess of the CGI. Yeah. So I, I do find, uh, compared to other ones, that it didn't drag and didn't sweep fast either. It was just there. And do you think, do you think it was the right length? Yeah. You can go beyond 84 minutes in that film. Yeah. You don't want to go too much into the origin of the shark. Now, I think the synopsis you said oversold the reasons for the shark's revenge because I don't think it was as brutal as the synopsis made it out to be. Like if somebody said to me, oh, you know, uh, they were going on a whole trek of watching all the shark movies and things, this would be one I'd recommend to them. I wouldn't recommend yeah. watching Swamp, Swamp Shark or uh, maybe some of the others, but I would definitely say yeah. this one, it wasn't a chore and it was entertaining. What do you think, Neil? Yeah, I mean, if you have the, if you had a choice between, obviously, the the top shark film is Jaws, always will be. But if you want something that's more enjoyable than, say, Jaws of Revenge, um, 
you probably have more of a laugh out of this film because Jaws of Revenge is quite dull in comparison to this film. One thing about Jaws of Revenge, Neil, that's similar to this is that in that movie, the sharks were in shallow, the shark was in shallow water, which it wouldn't be. It would have to be mad to go. It's like a suicide shark. Yeah. I mean, uh, and then obviously at least the um, attacks weren't dream sequences. Well, that's true. That's true. And and even of the more recent ones that we watched, I think it's definitely, you know, um, very watchable and uh, from, even from some of those. What about yourself, um, Ian? Is it, you going to recommend this to people? Yeah, absolutely. It's worth a watch. And, uh, you know, my favourite of our ones that we've reviewed is Robo Shark. Uh, again, a really ridiculous concept. And I, I enjoyed this one as much as that. So, yeah. Yeah, out of uh, we've watched a lot. And some of them are, you know, you find the ones that try and take themselves seriously are the ones that are boring. You know, so the more outlandish, should we say, is, is the best way to go. So, yeah. I definitely recommend this one. I think if the film knows it, what it wants to be, it's going to work. This film knows it's it can't take itself seriously. The call, as I said, the concept you can't take it seriously. So if they know that they've got a ludicrous concept and they don't take it seriously, you can have a good time with it. If you know what you're in for, you're going to enjoy it. And if you want to email us at all and about any of the episodes we've done, um, it's show at chatschmat.com and um, send it through. I've had some emails through and I've had some comments from people on some of our videos. So thank you to those who have commented. Comments are always welcome on the videos. So if you've got comments about this, if you've seen the movie, um, what did you think of it? Uh, do you agree with us or do you think we're um, deluded? Um, you let us know and uh, we'll try and reply or just ignore it and cram the corner. It'll be one of those too. Um, but from me, Johnny Porter, uh, I'd just like to say thank you again for joining us. Um, it's been uh, fun talking about these movies. There's many more to come. We are we'll be watching more, and we've already watched um, some movies that you've you've seen our reviews on. Um, so keep an eye on the channel for that. Um, but for me, it's goodbye for now, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Um, thanks for having me on as well as your co-host as usual. Thanks, guys. It's been fun. Neil, you know the scene in the you know the scene in the flash where he's explaining um time travel with the spaghetti and then he he puts the sauce on and he says it's a hot mess. Yeah. That's your end comments. <laughs> <laughs>